Ryan. What's going on, everyone? This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Of course, this is the Tom O'Brien Show. He will be back with us next week. Looking forward to it. Um, kind of closing this, you know, week really full of news. We didn't have a lot of stuff to do early this week, Monday and Tuesday. Of course, yeah, the Fed come out. We've spoken about this uh, consistently. Um, we're seeing a little bit, just kind of a minor, you know, just kind of, no, nah, I don't want to say sell off because it's not what it is. Of course, you have triple witching today as well. So you get a lot of weird hedging going on. Just a lot of volatility today. Okay, not a, too many big moves. You have the composite off about 0.37%. Dow Jones Industrial, uh, basically flat right now, still below that 42,000 uh, level, but right under it. You have the dollar making some small gains, trading about $100.72 uh, on the DXY. You have crude oil at 71.24, staying pretty stagnant right there at that level. You have the uh, E-mini trading at 5,754, off about 0.41%, that gold contract. Now, really, I've been making solid moves on this, uh, <laughs> even today, which is super nice. Uh, to see, of course, you get the dollar getting a little bit cheaper or, um, you know, expected to get cheaper than it is currently. Uh, makes it a little bit easier for other people to buy gold uh, for sure. We'll see if China can resume some of the purchasing of that as well. Of course, they were a massive driver uh, over this year. Same with central banks as well over the past few years for gold. But trading as it stands right now, 2,647, right below that high, uh, all-time high of 2,651. Copper still hanging uh, pretty high right now on that futures contract. We get 433. Uh, let's see right here. NQs, of course, talking about the composite, but just off about 0.47%. Uh, and then you have the Russell off about 0.87%. Silver doing okay as well, trading at 31.52. Uh, Somewhat of a volatile uh, time for silver recently, but still doing very well. 331.51. And those Dow futures uh, still trading pretty strong. 42,377 off about 0.16%. Um, let's see if anything else is happening. Steel Dynamics doing all right, still kind of keeping up in the higher range, which is nice to see. And we might start seeing, again, it's the stock really does, you know, historically, and that's not always the best way to look at stuff, but it, it is interesting. Uh, it, it tends to pick a pattern and it trades in that, you know, for about a month or two. You can kind of see going in like July as well, or excuse me, the beginning of June, all the way into August, fluctuating that 120, 130, and then it breaks lower. So we'll see if we can kind of start making a pattern, 110, 120. Uh, this is what I used to do with this stock all the time over the past few years because it just had that predictable range. Um, of course, you know, you always run the risk of breaking down lower or like right here, breaking through that trading range, kind of trying to struggle to get it and then really moving back down and establishing that lower uh, level of 110. Uh, but I'm keeping my eye on this. I think to the idea of decreasing interest rates, kind of easing economic issues uh, should Probably, you know, it'll lag, but but bring back in uh, some, some, some better industry kind of expenditure on that. Let's take a look. Lucid off about 2.77%. Then to bring up as well is Rivian uh, getting shot today. Now, I don't know, again, if this is some kind of a hedging thing. Uh, you did have, so you're trading a lot lower right now, off about 9.77, right? We're closed that gap entirely. On some volume, more than is usually traded. You had earlier this week, the news came out that the uh, CEO just sold uh, some of the shares. I think it's totaling something around 1.4 million uh, USD. I mean, it's not really bearish or bullish, I would say. It just kind of occurs. Um, if we could reject this level, though, and move back up, uh, which, which I could see this happening. I could see people really accumulating at this level. It seems like a consensus. You did have some larger uh, bullish, um, excuse me, bearish kind of options get purchased earlier this week. Um, but I don't know if this was just as a way to short up. I don't know when those expire. Um, but interesting to see if you can reject this level. I mean, I think we move back up and start trading above that $14 range, um, especially if we can reject it next week up with some decent volume. Uh, I think people are attracted to this. You know, one of the nice things, even though they're not profitable yet, uh, you know, obviously they burn through cash. Well, they have some cash to burn through right now currently, which I think is nice. And of course, if you get interest rates coming down a little bit lower, uh, going forward, that's obviously good uh, for some of these more startup type, uh, type companies. Keep seeing more of them as well. Uh, someone was talking to me about it today. Didn't even know this was happening with it that early. And uh, they, they said they loved it. And this is someone who drives like diesel, uh, you know, pickup trucks. So, I don't know if that matters to any of you. Um, that's interesting nonetheless. And then loose it off a little bit, Tesla off a little bit uh, as well. Kind of staying in this range uh, with some of the renewable technology, 
Of course, some of the big news today is the idea of Three Mile Island nuclear plant uh, possibly starting with Microsoft AI uh, power deal. This is what I've been talking about for a little bit, right? So this is going to be through Constellation Energy. And you have a lot of interesting stuff through this chain, right? So you need, you know, the guys to mine it. That's where we get CCG coming in. You know, you need the people uh, to enrich it. Maybe you get Centris Energy in Ohio with that kind of stuff, uh, which is pretty phenomenal. And we could talk about that a little bit, actually. Centris, um, they own the American Centrifuge Facility. That's in Piketon, Ohio. Uh, they're going to address congressional leaders later this month uh, as a part to uh, ramp up domestic uranium enrichment. Right. And so I have, we actually have a viewer who had emailed me and I really love hearing from this guy. You're out there. I know you know who you are. Thank you for sending this to me. So this was from the uh, IEA and it was interesting, right? So kind of the big summarization of this kind of what the IEA released was from Bloomberg is that as it stands currently, um, the nuclear power is set to underperform in the UN scenario, okay? And so I wanted to read a little bit what this was saying and what they meant by that. And they were extrapolating uh, from current production output, meaning of things coming online, them being, you know, uh, using them for energy production, and then kind of what uh, large, you know, countries are, are kind of planning right now. And they're extrapolating from that basis. Now, I, I think there's a really solid case to be made and we can see this too with, with Microsoft and any, even like Amazon and really anything that's going to do these large server areas. I would say this is going to happen in the uh, Gulf Arab world as well. Um, that the demand for it is going to become far more apparent going forward. And we might get a change in some of these projections. I mean, having Centris Energy come is huge. I think I would say as well, and we're about to go to the break, so I can elaborate a little bit more on this. Um, but even if, right, nuclear isn't the dominant uh, way to get energy. I still think the demand increase is there. Uh, it's no doubt coming and it is new. And, um, you know, we can talk a little bit about that and, and why I still think it is bullish, at least for the prices of, of the ore itself and, and, and maybe some things like Centris that are going to be enriching it. So stay right there. Uh, we'll be right back. <laughs> 